Up the Down Staircase Spinal Cord the spinal cord is located in the vertebral canal and consists of two symmetrical halves separated by the ventral median fissure and dorsal median septum. Rostrally, the spinal cord continues into the medulla oblongata. Caudally, its slightly flattened cylindrical body ends at the conus medullaris, whose tip extends to the sacrum as filum terminale. The spinal cord has a segmental structure being divided into 31 segments, each of which connects to ventral and dorsal roots, forming 31 pairs of spinal nerves – cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal. The cross-section of the spinal cord reveals gray matter shaped as a butterfly inside it. Each wing of the butterfly has a ventral, lateral, and dorsal horn. It is worth noting that the lateral horn is present only in the thoracic and upper lumbar segments. In the center of the gray matter, the central canal is located. It is lined with ependymocytes and filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Gray matter is formed by the bodies and processes of multipolar neurons, neuroglial cells, and blood vessels. The ventral horns contain the motor neurons that send axons via the ventral roots and the spinal nerves to striated muscles. The lateral horns contain the preganglionic sympathetic motor neurons that send axons to the paravertebral ganglia. The multipolar neurons of the dorsal horns receive afferent nerve fibers from spinal ganglia via the dorsal roots. Each dorsal root axon entering the dorsal horn divides into ascending and descending branches, which in turn produce horizontal collaterals. The branches extend only a few segments at most. Neurons with the same function and accompanying glial cells are grouped forming nuclei. They are usually depicted as circles or ovals. Swedish neuroscientist Rexed proposed to map them out as segments which are called Rexed lemini. Marginal or dorsal marginal nucleus number one gelatinous substance number two, nucleus proprius number three, posterior thoracic nucleus or nucleus dorsalis of Clark number four, intermedia medial nucleus number five, and corresponding lemini from one to six and partly lemina seven are responsible for extra proprio and interoceptive sensations. Sympathetic preganglionic nerve fibers at segments from cervical 8 to lumbar 3 and parasympathetic preganglionic nerve fibers at segments from sacral 2 to sacral 4 originate from intermedia lateral nucleus number 6 which is situated in the lateral horn and corresponding major part of lamina 7. The gray matter surrounding the central canal, lamina 10, is termed gray commissure. Here axons decussate from one side of the spinal cord to another. Anterolateral, number 7, anteromedial, number 8, central, number 9, 
posterior lateral number 10, posterior medial number 11, and corresponding lamina from 8 to 9 are located in the ventral horn and innervate skeletal muscles. The nucleus of the accessory nerve from cervical 1 to cervical 6 and the nucleus of the phrenic nerve from cervical 3 to cervical 5 are also located in the ventral horns. All these nuclei possess alpha and gamma motor neurons. The activity of alpha motor neurons depends on various impacts. Their discharge depends on the algebraic sum of excitatory and inhibitory impulses that converge upon them, one of them being the activity of interneurons called Renshaw cells. The axons of alpha motor neurons send them collaterals, while Renshaw cells send inhibitory impulses back. On the periphery of the spinal cord lies white matter. Its part immediately surrounding the gray matter consists of short running fibers called fasciculi proprii, or ground bundles. They consist of axons of interneurons located in the gray matter and branches of dorsal root axons ascending and descending adjacent to the gray matter. Fasciculi proprii provide intersegmental and intrasegmental reflexes. A bundle of nerve fibers crossing the midline of the spinal cord just anterior to the gray commissure is termed anterior white commissure. Here nerve fibers of some long tracts decussate. A bundle of nerve fibers that cross the midline of the spinal cord just posterior to the gray commissure is termed posterior white commissure. It contains various nerve fibers crossing from one side of the spinal cord to the other. The white matter between fasciculi proprii and spinal cord surface is divided into ventral or anterior, lateral and dorsal or posterior funiculi, which consist of bundles of nerve fibers glia and blood vessels. The bundles containing axons of the same function form tracts. The ventral funiculus contains descending tracts, ventral, corticospinal, here number one, tectospinal, number two, vestibular spinal, number three, reticular spinal, number four, and ascending tracts, ventral spina thalamic, number six, spina olivary, number seven. The vestibular spinal tract is divided into the lateral and the medial ones. The latter gives several bundles running along the ventral median fissure and named sulcum marginal fasciculus, number five. The lateral funiculus contains descending tracts, lateral corticospinal, number eight, rubrospinal, number nine, and ascending tracts, lateral spina thalamic, number ten, ventral, number eleven, and dorsal, number twelve, spina cerebellar. Spinotectal and spinoreticular tracts, they are not indicated in the picture, are located close to the lateral spinothalamic tract and their fibers are more or less intermingled with the latter. Anterior and lateral spinothalamic, spinotectal and spinoreticular tracts together are called anterolateral system 
the ascending pathway that conveys sensations of pain, temperature and crude touch. The dorsal funiculus carries ascending tracts, fascicular cuneatus or burdachs, number 13, and fasciculus gracilis, golds, number 14. Thus, the spinal cord performs conductive and reflex functions. It transmits signals from the afferent nerve fibers of the sensory neurons to the upper sensory centers in the CNS and from the upper motor centers to the body. It also contains reflex arcs and coordinates many somatic and visceral reflexes. As noted in the video about the embryogenesis of the nerve tissue, the neural tube consists of three layers – ventricular zone, mental zone and marginal zone. Whilst the cranial part of the neural tube forms the brain, the caudal part develops into the spinal cord. The lateral walls of the neural tube thicken. Its dorsal and ventral walls remain thin and are called roof and floor plate, respectively. The internal surface of the lateral walls is demarcated into dorsal and ventral parts by the inner longitudinal sulcus called sulcus limitans. The dorsal part is termed ala lamina. Its cells become functionally afferent or sensory. At that time, through the unipolar neurons of spinal ganglia develop from the neural crest. The central processes penetrate the ala lamina and synapse with its neurons. The ventral part is called the basal lamina. Its cells become efferent or motor. The axons of basal lamina cells leave the developing spinal cord, forming ventral roots and join with the peripheral processes of spinal ganglia neurons, forming the spinal nerves. The cells of ala lamina form two longitudinal columns, general somatic afferent column extending throughout the spinal cord and receiving impulses from extra and proprioceptors, and general visceral afferent column formed at thoracic, upper lumbar and sacral levels and receiving impulses from viscera and blood vessels. The cells of basal lamina also form two longitudinal columns, general visceral efferent column, which is formed at thoracic, upper lumbar and sacral levels and gives rise to preganglionic nerve fibers to viscera, glands and blood vessels, forming synapses with postganglionic neurons in para, prevertebral, terminal and intramural ganglia, and general somatic efferent column, which extends throughout the spinal cord and gives rise to nerve fibers which innervate the skeletal muscles. These four cell columns are termed general because there are three special columns in the brainstem. The lumen of the neural tube reduces in size and forms central canal. Neuroepithelial cells of the ventricular zone differentiate into ependymal cells forming the lining of the central canal. Thank you for attention.